Mm. Okay. Do you have friends coming? Hi, so I'm Mo Xiaoling. I, uh, Mo is my last name. Um, Xiaoling is my first name, and I teach K to eight uh, Mandarin at Seattle Country Day School. So I'm very glad to share some of my struggles and thoughts, or probably solutions about how to merge social justice standards into intercultural communication standards. Um, if you're still thinking, ah, oh, what it's fit, it's what I expect is um, probably you can find a potential new approach to help you design your own units, lessons, and probably you can find some strategies to um, facilitate some troubling topics, like a little bit hard to discuss topics in, your, in our language classroom, and you'll see some activity examples. And what, what I expect for, for our audience is I hope we can change from yeah, but da, 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 we have so many reasons for not doing this. I hope we can get to yeah and start from very little step. Okay, thank you. Um, I see we still have friends coming. So I'm not sure whether everybody's familiar with this, at least the uh, right, it's been already a few years, uh, I think a few years or now. So the right side is in uh, our actual intercultural communication. We have two basic functions. One is investigate product, practice, and perspectives. Another one is interact with our um, target language speakers and with uh, appropriate language and behaviors. So I think the recent years, the left side, the social justice standards are pretty well often discussed in all kinds of language teaching meetings, uh, conferences, especially this summer. I think I, I attended a few. Um, so in my mind, they have some connections. And I will see whether I can combine them in a doable way to, in our language classroom. Um, I think I'll, I'll share all this website and link. There's all clickable link there later. Uh, you can find the standards in the Learning for Justice. The website changed the name now. So here's one unit plan template uh, when I attended the actual summer workshop we are using like this format and you can also find a lot of sample units from the book words and actions um i tried to use it in the summer to like map out all my units for this year but i didn't i didn't finish even one just to be honest i feel oh wow it's already a lot to cover all the five c and three modes and i think this template didn't it lists um, list all the intercultural communication standards yet. And then you have the all social justice standard, the four category, identity, diversity, justice, action. It just a lot there. So I found, hmm, this is probably not the doable way for me to do throughout the whole year. Um, so I tried to simplify my program and my unit template so i want to introduce my program vision first because um you can still see here it's it's a lot okay so i i need myself i need a very clear simple guidance for me to to guide my students for me to decide how to teach what to teach how to design my own units lessons i say this to my parents, families, to my colleagues, to my students. I just try to summarize like this. It just hope um, for your reference here. I said we educate our future generations to become lifelong interculturally competent communicators. Which means I can divide it to main expert. One is to they can describe themselves in their culture with pride. It's, it's a little bit new for me. So, oh, we just 
talk about ourselves. But I want to emphasize we have to make sure well, our students feel when they talk about themselves, they are very proud of themselves. That's a little bit new concept for me too. Another thing is with their learning different cultures, learning our target cultures and other cultures too. But the mindset is they always compare the cultures uh, with respect and curiosity. So that's my main guidance guiding me to deal with, handle all the even teachable moments during the class and when, we, when I design my curriculum. Okay, so I want to give you a very quick um, probably example. It's kind of our first unit for many teachers, I guess. I call identity, you can call probably all about me or who am I? I think similar things. Um, I pulled out four standards from the social justice from the left side as I, I I decided to do the the middle grades. I don't know what grade we are teaching, so I think grade six to eight, the social standards, social justice standard look like that. So, for example, identity one, you can all see this specific language when you click the link later, I'll sh uh, which I'll share with you. I know and I like who I am, and I can comfortably talk about my family and myself and describe our various group identities. And for the diversity. Um, I'm not going to read every word, but I'm curious about others and I can ask questions respectfully, listen carefully non and non-judgmentally. For justice, strength as I relate to people as individuals and not representative of groups. I can name stereotypes, um, action, we have actually a lot of different action for so grade six to eight. The action, one of the action is I can respectfully tell someone when his or her words or actions are biased or hurtful. So yeah, action usually we say, oh, we need to go to the street to protest. It doesn't have to be like that. I think a lot of things we can do in our classroom. However, those um, social justice, it's designed for all subjects, not for our language classes. As I feel, wow, I don't know how to connect with my all the language skills, communications, culture, da da da. So I try to map out in this way the four points. For example, the first I'll break down each point and give you some examples later. So first I would say I can identify main information about few Chinese and Asian Americans and examine stereotypes of Asian Americans. For you can change to your target culture. Um, target audience in your class. And this for me is very clear, it's about inter interpretive. They're listening, they're reading some information and you can you can build assessment on that. And for the intercultural communications um, expert, they are investigate, they're investigating different perspective practices. Um, I'll, so let's see the first first, you see those two, three, four later too. So what I did and I'm still doing, I'm changing every every year little by little. So I'll show this picture first. Hmm. Tashinaliran. Where she's from? Where is and I will let students guess. And oh. Okay, uh, I think she's the Olympic swimmer. Um and she's actually, a, yeah, um, her mom is from originally from China. So this is, I'll, I'll go very slowly for if I'm teaching in class. And oh, okay, that's one identity, one Asian American look like that. Oh, and um, we're in Washington. I think most of us should recognize this. Right? Oh, how about, how about this man? He's from I don't know, probably some of our students recognize some not. Um, yeah, I will show another picture and keep going. So how do we describe this man? Um, here's another one. I, I, if you remember, not just Asian Americans, it could be somebody from China who, who's living in China. So yeah, I don't have time to interact with everybody. If Usually I will let you guess. What do you think she's from? And she's a minority group in Xinjiang. 
um, one more. Hmm. It's also a a timing, a process to for us to reflect our assumptions when we see an image. That simple. And she's a very famous skier, and she will attend the Olympic, the Winter Olympic next year in Beijing, I think. Um, so for oh, how do you bring more language? Here's some reading, the just reading about like the last last girl, Eileen Gu Eileen, and you, we can learn all those here. Here's a video I'm not going to show, but she speaks in Mandarin too. So, uh oh, okay, she speaks Mandarin and English. So that's the that's the language I'm going to like low our students to understand and they're going to use it later when they describe themselves and bes besides the current people we also bring some very important historic figures um i don't know whether you know him but he's very very important person and we i think we should all remember and mention um, and then to, oh, how do I know students understand? How do I know they understand those information? Some of them, they can, we have different levels in my class. They can retell what they learn or they can just introduce a new, new Asian American for the heritage speakers. I think our state have a lot of heritage speakers in whatever language. They can interview their own community members. And so we connect with our community, connect with our families too. Um, if you remember, you also mentioned about it's also the uh, the skill the one goes to examine stereotypes at this one picture example, and you can just see, think, wonder, how do you feel? Um, another two I use a lot is the um, uh, courageous conversations for agreements. I translate it to Chinese and the compass. Uh, to help our students to find where they are and, and try to bring to the center. Um, yeah, just a tool to facilitate this thinking process and conversation. Okay, number two is, okay, now it's the student's turn. It's, I say it's presentational mode. They are going to describe themselves and their culture. Um, I think I remember social justice then they said, I can comfortably talk about my family. Um, for me, it's still a little bit sensitive to me. To me. I, I don't know how students can comfortably talk about their family if their family is not a comfortable topic. So I would not say family. <laughs> I would say people who are important to them or places or things. So it's more, more general. I, I hope it's safer way to address that. Um, and I add one thing is some assumption they want to dispel, some stereotypes they want to dispel. Uh, dispel. So the here's our lower school, I mean, our um, second grade, and they bring something to show the class and we try to describe. Um, she mentioned what she wants to mention, like, oh, my grandma from Cuba, my another side, grandparents from Honduras, um, El Salvador, different countries, and we can we are we are going to talk about the map. Oh, where's this country? Um, and she's going to learn how to read and say this per slide. And that's our little higher level friends in middle school. Um, usually, like previous year, I'll just end like this. Um, I haven't started and probably start next week. Um, instead of family, as I said, we use the circle of care. And that's from Elevate Education. Um, yeah, you, you can get the link later if you need the template. Or I will ask students to organize their whole identity information to, they can choose. They can choose the identity ring or they can choose the cultural iceberg to help them, help them to um, analyze their identity a little bit more. Or Here's another organizer. I'll call identity graphic organizers. I would just provide a few version and students can choose. Here's the real myself. And yeah, I feel somebody see me like this. 
um, you know, and I want somebody to see this aspect of myself. Uh, the Chinese means like my real myself is I like to ski. I actually I don't like math for it's for probably Asian American student, but probably everybody think I would I should be good at math. They should they're not like sports, something like that. It's just an example for students to 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 unpack those um yeah different aspect of identities and it's okay to talk about that and please let all um us know about your real identity number three is um i think three and four is kind of very it's, I, I deal with in a similar way and it's all interpersonal mode now so we interact with other people with um, target language speaking people. Um, so here I emphasize we ask questions and make comments about others in other culture respectfully. And we are going to analyze some potential microaggressions. Um, and after that, we can also, as a, even you're not engaged in those um, conversation, you can also tell someone when your words or actions are biased or hurtful. So that's our action expert in our social justice center. Um, for example, I do a lot of scenario for this, um, this point. After scenario analysis, we can do some role play in our target language. So here's a scenario there. And as you see, all the question below is pretty uh novice level question or you can say sorry question you can say it's intermediate low and we are going to discuss which one sounds more respectful especially you just don't know you just know that guests speak mandarin that's all right and why some is not that respectful um we're going to discuss to choose either one and discuss a little bit why Mm, for the advanced language level class, we discuss why in, in Mandarin too. Um, it's another scenario and it's so real. It just happened in my class, I think last week. Um, and we can also discuss, wait, Shama, why? Why student A say something like that? Mm. And how does student B feel? Why? he or she might feel like that. And the number three is our action, right? If you heard that, if you saw that, do you just go leave away or say nothing? Uh, we can say something too. We can take some actions and make a little difference. Um, we are gonna discuss that together. I think this is not also doable in language. We provide, after discussion, we provide those language Mm, about what we can say to student A. And then at the end, we can also do a role play to about how to say that, like theater play. Um, yeah, more similar scenarios. And that's also real happening in my class. I I don't know your school, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I forgot to introduce my school actually has 44% like self-identify as Asian students yeah but still um looks like pretty yeah normal when people say that in in classroom too so similar why and how does b feel how can you what can you say to student a if you heard that and we can also take actions yeah that's all from i think i said 20 minutes i try to keep it short any question at this point i'll go back to my main um i think that's my main point i want to make is to make it simple not like fill out the whole whole template it might be two pages three pages and we still cover what we try to implement in our language classroom, we practice all different modes. We also try to develop students' intercultural competency. Thank you. Any 
questions, comments? Thank you, Shaoling, for the presentation. It's thoughtful and provocative. I'm wondering if you or anyone here has some helpful things to keep in mind when you're attempting social justice conversations of the sort that you present here uh, and you as a teacher do not identify as um, coming from the same background or ethnicity as the majority of students. For example, I'm teaching a heritage Spanish class mm -hmm. uh, and am one of the few non-Latino people in the class, but I want to, in fact, uh, move towards action. And I'm just interested in hearing uh, suggestions or things to keep in mind from anyone who's maybe had this experience because it's my first experience. Thank you. Mm. So what you what you mean is you you probably not share the same cultural background experience as what your your students from Spanish speaking background. I think for me in my classroom is also very diverse. We have can I say like um main um let me find a good language that better language we have yeah we have the diverse background i think it's a it's it's our reality i would say in my in my view in my position i felt like that so we yeah i think and whenever if you emphasize i statement and we can we can still discuss together and also i i still feel the compass compass um it's very helpful to pull out all different kinds. Um, not this one. Remember that. And let me go back here. It's easier. This one. Mm, you can still share how you feel, how you think from your points of view. I don't I think we can. The idea is we can all be real. I mean, personally, I think we can all be real. And we are all different. We are all unique. And that's good. <laughs> that's the norm. Um, we don't have to feel like I I we just had a conversation yesterday with our in our school professional development. Like being white is it's it's okay, of course. And I I think um yeah, we all should feel proud of ourselves, whatever background we are. But we do want to that's my yeah vision i feel it fits in many situations so i'm telling people a lot this we should whatever color culture background we all feel very proud of ourselves the point is we also re respect others respect our students students respect each other i don't know whether i answer your question i know it's it's hard to do probably in this situation Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, I think I'm recording. Um, yeah, we have four more minutes. If I'm not using my personal account, I probably can talk longer or pause. We can do more interaction. But yeah. And I'm, I'm going to share this slides, of course. And I think I have some link there. And you can unpack depending on what your what grade, even like kindergarten. Um, yes, you see, you have a kindergarten to second grade. We can talk about this all from kindergarten. So, all right. Uh, if no, yeah. Um, I yeah, feel free to email me i just want one unit about identity probably you want, might want to talk about oh holiday celebration i'm going to develop that unit too we can even collaborate together if you're very interested in it and i think yeah it's a teamwork for this topic 
yes um i see uh, yeah joyce yeah i uh, i'll figure out where to put my slides since everybody's here let me um, i can just share on the how about that if it's easier good yeah feel free to uh what i forgot my email if you're developing your unit and ah i want to make it i want to make it simple but i also want to incorporate some social justice standards we can we can do it together and i'll figure out whether we can share we can even build a folder with waffled and so we can share with our all awesome language teachers all right thank you thank you for coming enjoy the weekend the long weekend <laughs> okay thank you so much thank you harris thank you joy thank you everybody gracias Mercy. <laughs> 谢谢, 谢谢大家.